Now this session, well this board, uh, I think you'll find that um, the level, the abstraction level, goes up a bit and that reminds me of the experience I had. Um, I've, I've, talk, I've taught this course, in, as I've said earlier in earlier sessions, I've taught this course both in the US and in China as a as a prof when I when I was waging. And in the US it was strictly a master's class and I didn't have any dropouts. And that's not surprising, you know, it was a master's class. But in China, uh, my dean, uh, I think against my advice, uh, insisted that I make it uh, a mixed bachelor, master's class. And I, I used a different text, but it was pretty much the same level of abstraction, you know, very pure math type uh, format, you know, with uh, theorem statements and proofs and so forth, you know, very, very pure math. And uh, I, I must have had a quarter, I guess, of, of the bachelor students drop out. And, and you know they'd, they'd leave me notes, or they'd come up to me and say, "You know, prof, it's uh, it's, it's just too hard. I, I I don't understand it." And they they would drop out. So uh, you know, as as you'll see, as this uh, level, the abstraction level increases, uh, it becomes you know if you if you're accustomed to pure mathematics and that level of abstraction, then you'll feel quite at home because it's uh, it's very similar. If you don't like pure math because of the abstraction level, uh, then you know, <laughs> well, you know, you vote with your own feet. Right? You you may find uh, this course becoming too pure math-like for your tastes, for your interests. So uh, you know, you, you may not like it. So be warned. Um, now I can imagine another portion of you, perhaps, uh, uh, impatient for me to get to the higher stuff, so so that you can uh, learn what you really want to learn, which is more of a you know, graduate level pure math and math physics, which is you know what I'm really supposed to be doing. I'm still all all, all these courses I'm giving at undergrad level are just preparatory, so. Uh, I, I, you know, I feel myself, I haven't yet uh, opened my wings, so, so, so to speak. Uh, okay, so now with that said, uh, you know, a kind of warning in some ways, challenge in others, uh, we are talking, you know, we're, in the, we're in the context of talking about uh, NFAs, non um, deterministic finite automata. And uh, in this session, uh, I'll give you another example. So it'll be example 1.35, and it's our fourth. And um, we're using the capital letter N to stand for machines, you know, automata, finite automata, that are non-deterministic, N for non-deterministic. And it's our fourth example. So I'll give you, here's, here's the state diagram, state transition diagram. And you will notice an eta here. And you will also notice uh, an arrow here and here, both labelled A. So in on two counts, you know, the eta and the repetition, uh, obviously a uh, non-deterministic machine. Okay. So this will uh, this will be an example. And uh, have I, you know, I've asked you. I've asked you to do this for homework, uh, to analyze, you know, you, you don't need to synthesize, it's, it's given to you, right? Uh, synthesis will come later, you know, design in other words. So, uh, here's, here's a machine to analyze, you know, do it, do it for homework. And uh, the textbook, you know, Sipsa, he makes a comment, uh, that this machine, you know, the N4, in other words, this, this thing, uh, it'll, it'll get used later, uh, we'll come back to it, in other words. And we'll use it to, to model how uh, an NFA, because this is an NFA, can be converted to a DFA. Now, I've, I've mentioned uh, previous board, I think, 
that uh, there's, there's a theorem, and we'll actually, in fact we'll actually start it in this board, there's a theorem which says that uh, any NFA, yeah, non-deterministic finite automaton, any NFA has an equivalent, equivalent just means uh, the, two, the two machines um, recognize the same language. In other words, they do the same job. They're equivalent in that sense. So uh, any NFA has an equivalent DFA. Okay? And that'll be, uh, that, that in fact is a theorem statement that we'll come on to uh, in a couple of sessions uh, on, on this board. Right? So, uh, you know, when we start doing some examples on how uh, an NFA can be converted to a DFA, you know, in other words, to find the equivalent uh, DFA, um, we'll use this as, as a model to, to illustrate how that's done. Okay, so you'll, you'll come, come back to that. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, I, the textbook did not say uh, what what the function, you know, what the job is of this uh, particular NFA. Uh, see if you can figure it out yourself. But let's let's do a couple of examples, a couple of strings that it does accept, and a couple of other examples of strings it does not accept. In other words, rejects. Okay. So now notice the eta, and notice the you know, there are two exit arrows, two transitions here. Uh, both you know, from the same state, and both labelled with the same uh, input symbol, in this case A. Uh, Alright, so the alphabet is just AB, right? so it's a binary alphabet, not, not, not one in this case, just AB, not there's any difference. Okay. Uh, now here's some examples of strings that it accepts, let's, uh, let's analyse that a little bit. Um, okay, so if the null string <laughs> goes in, so uh, the no transition, it just stays in Q1, that's an accept state, right, because of the two bars, so that's accepted. Okay, A, A goes in, now why is, why, why is that an accept state? Uh, well look, you've got an eta here, right, so you start in Q1, now without, uh, Without reading, remember, uh, E is tricky, uh, eta is tricky. Um, it, it will go to the next state without uh, reading uh, without reading a symbol. It just goes bam, straight here. Uh, and you'll be left, and you'll have like two machines now. You have one in that state and one in this state. Well, uh, and, and you know, it's, an, it, it's a non-deterministic, you'll have a branching. This eta creates a branching. So you'll have one machine left in Q1, that state, and you have another machine left in this state, Q3. Okay? And now an A comes in. Well, uh, so deterministically, this one goes to here. Okay? And that's it. You know, that's the end of the input string. So it's just left in Q1. Well, that's, that's an accept state. So that string, just A, gets accepted. All right? How about BABA, B-A-B-A? Uh, okay, B, A or A, okay, well, you, yeah, you, you need to draw out the whole thing, it gets, gets a bit tedious, but I'm just sort of doing it verbally now. So why is BABA accepted? Now, see, I only, I only need to find one path that ends up um, except then the, the whole NFA accepts. Okay, so I, I only need to find one path that works. Uh, all right, so bad, bad, why, why does BABA work? Why is that string accepted? Okay, so B, A, B, A. Okay, I found one path, that works. Okay, BA, B, A, A. B, A, A. That works. All right. Uh, now, why does B not work? Mm. Now, not, not, you know, it's harder because they'll have to exclude all possibilities, right? Just finding one's not, one, one failure is not enough because uh, for um, an NFA to reject, 
all possible paths have to reject. So it's tougher. You have to explore more. You, you, you have to look further. Okay, so uh, why does B not work? Well, how many possibilities are there from, from Q1? Well, there's that one and that one. Okay? So if it's just B, it's left here. That's not a, an accept state. So, so uh, reject. Okay? Now the other possibility, now there are only two. Yeah, there's only two exit. Now you, you, you go here, uh, you've got an eater, so immediately you create a machine uh, in this state, Q3, and then you read B, but there's no exit. There's no exit arrow for B. So it dies. It dies. Okay, remember from the previous board? So it dies. Okay, so in both cases, it, uh, it either died or, <laughs> or uh, rejected. So uh, B is not 